Thursday, May 5th, 2011. You're on, Yvonne. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to my benchmark portfolio. My name is Yvonne. First off, I want to start off with a few of my strengths and weaknesses as a way of showing you guys what I can contribute to the upper house and what I can still keep growing on. Uh, a few of my weaknesses are criticism. I do not like I don't like criticism, especially when it's towards me. Uh, finding flaws in my own work, uh, usually because I'm the one that wrote, like for example, an essay. If I write the essay, I believe it's perfect because I wrote it. And I know that I need to look for help because not everything is perfect. And ways in which I can do this are, for example, when I have to write an essay, um, we have Google Docs now, and I can share my, my files with my teachers so that they can give me their opinions on it. A few of my strengths are voice to my opinions. Um, for example, in when we have Socratic seminars in English class, I always have deep analysis, and I feel like I contribute to the discussion, and I'm able to make good points. Um, I'm a good listener, and in class, I participate 100%. Um, for my metaphor, I decided to do the moon and the sun. I am my ninth grade year. I was the moon because the moon doesn't radiate its own light. It reflects like from the sun and my ninth grade year I was kind of like that I was a bit less confident in my opinions and I was more passive I expressed my opinions but I was more passive and that represents the moon and now my tenth grade year I'm the sun where I radiate my own light and I reflect it upon others uh, my transformation a lot of my transformation from the moon to the sun has to do with me joining SLC I feel like SLC is Obviously, it's the Student Leadership Council, and it's a place where leadership skills are expected from you. And um, one specific leadership skill that I use in the Student Leadership Council is collaborating productively, because obviously I'm not the only student there, and there are more people there, and I constantly have to collaborate with them when to make in order to have in order to make the school better. I have to communicate effectively with them and collaborate and yeah. So my claim, I divide my claim up into two parts. Me as a learner and me as a leader. Um, when I was in ninth grade, I was trying to find my place in, in the school as a student and, and as an individual. I have become more confident when it comes to voicing my opinions. And when in groups, I do not hesitate to let my group members know where I stand. When I was in ninth grade, I would voice my opinion, but in a more subtle way. As a leader, I've grown here at Metro because I can differentiate times when it is okay to play around versus the times when I need to stay focused and work on my work. And I encourage others to do the same. Um, I feel like my claim shows that I think critically about situations that I may be in. For example, if I'm in a group and my group members aren't focused, I, I think about that and I think about the outcome that that's going to have on not only me but their project as well. And I, you know, encourage them to do their work and to just get things done. Um, and obviously that that is collaborating productively as well because you're in a group with different people and different people have different opinions and you have to work through that. So all the artifacts that I chose, I think, show me as a student who completes the projects and is able to feel proud about them and thinks critically about the choices that she makes. Um, my first artifact is my digital backdrop. My second one is the Zeta Means. And the third one is the Evolution Project. Um, for creative expression, I chose my digital backdrop. This, the assignment is to create a visual aid representing one of your beliefs. In Global Studies, we had been learning about we, had, we wrote an essay for this, I believe, and basically you just had to, you had to choose one belief that you had that you felt very strongly about and create a visual aid about that for, um, for exhibition, uh, along with personal narratives. Um, mine was based on a strong belief that of to intolerance. I believe in being tolerant to things that may seem weird or different to us. And specifically, I chose um, tolerance towards homosexuality. This is my digital backdrop. Um, the message that I wanted to get across through this was that we have to balance two different perspectives in order to, to be tolerant. Um, I use the letters, the words tolerance. They have different colors, and they represent the gay, lesbian, bisexual.
actual flag, and the worlds represent having two perspectives of balance. Um, the leadership still associated with this artifact were completing projects. To me, completing projects means not only getting it, in, getting it in on time, but also feeling proud about it and feeling proud about the outcome. I feel like I, I feel proud about this artifact because I was able to, to get my message across. And the reason that I know this is because my mom, she, she said that she, she, you know, she really understood where we were coming from, especially because I was in a group with um, two people that had just recently revealed that they were bisexual. Um, and it also ties with communicating effectively because obviously it's a visual and a lot I'm I'm more of a person that's used to expressing yourself with words through writing and so this was a challenge for me because um, it's a visual and I felt like I conquered that. Um, outside of school I complete projects. I, I'm in a soccer team and a lot of the times we have raffles to get money for our team. And that to me is a project because you have to, in order to get the money for your team and better your team, you have to make sure you sell all the raffle tickets and get on time. And communicate effectively. I, I feel like I do that every day with, with my mom, my brothers and sisters, you know, my brother, he's younger. And I feel like I always want things to go my way. And I have to, in order for things to go my way, I have to communicate with him in a way that he will understand, not just yelling at him. <laughs> Um, and this this artifact, um, because I did it my freshman year, I was I was the moon during my freshman year, and I feel like because I because I completed this artifact and I felt proud about it, it contributed to my transformation to the sun. My second artifact is the analysis and research. It's freedom means the assignment was to create a claim and a visual aid expressing our opinions on punishment, personal prisons, and the type of responsibility that a free person has. <clears throat> uh, in global studies, we had been learn we had been learning about different philosophers. One of them included Plato, and we we learned about his allegory of the cave. This allegory was where um, basically there were a group of people. They were tied. They were chained to a wall, and all they could see all they could see was. So they would like change, right? And then the wall would be right here. And there's a fire behind them. So anything that passed through the fire, they all they could see would see the would be the shadows. And so because that's all they saw, that they began to think that that was the reality. And, um, and that's like we know that's not the case because there were those were actual people walking by, and it wasn't just a shadow. Um, and for my this is my poster. For my claim was, freedom means that no law should punish by death. It means questioning what is enforced on us by society and using our rights to express our beliefs. Um, one of my paragraphs was about punishment. I talked about how I do not believe in the death penalty because I feel like it doesn't make sense to kill somebody because they killed somebody else. It just, it's like repeating the same crime over again. Uh, the leadership skill I used with this artifact was thinking critically, I had to really think about what my, where I stood and what freedom meant. And I had to not only look at different perspectives, but I had to analyze myself and think about my values and what I thought was right and come up with this. And um, thinking critically, I can use that outside of the world. Like It can be something as simple as choosing what you're going to wear in the morning. I want to wear these shoes. They have pink on them, and my sweater has pink on them, so I'm going to wear that. Or it can be something like you see a movie preview, and you're they're trying they're obviously trying to convince you to go watch the movie. So you have to think critically about oh, do I really want to spend ten dollars on this, or just wait until it's on DVD? Um, this artifact was I also completed it my freshman year. I was also the moon. And I feel like it also uh, contributed to my transformation to the sun because I was able to think critically. And I, I mean, I have always thought critically about my choices, but this, doing this project, I feel like showed my my peers and my teachers that I'm able to think critically and that I can that I can complete projects. My third artifact is the evolution project. 
for this assignment, we had to pick an animal that you were interested in and find out where the animal descended from. In order to do this, we built a cladogram. A cladogram is like a chart showing, um, like from the bottom, like it shows where an animal descended from. Uh, I chose the platypus. Mm. Platypus was is was a very difficult animal to research because not many studies have been done on it. And but I did learn a couple things. Like the platypus is really interesting because they're they they can be underwater, like they can breathe underwater, but they're mammals at the same time. Like they lay eggs and and like produce milk. So it's pretty interesting. To me. Uh, something that's special about them, we were learning about natural selection and um, survival of the fittest. And the thing is that because platypuses can only be, well, they're mostly found in Australia, and Australia is like, is an island. So not many animals, not many other animals can come into Australia. Whereas, like for example, if you were in South America, because they're connected to other lands, more animals can come in and more mixes of animals are created. So the platypus has stayed a platypus for a really long time, and it hasn't really evolved much as other animals. Um, yeah. So this, this is my platogram. I had to, um, because the platypus hasn't, you haven't, there, not many studies have been made on them, I had to go online and look for platograms and make, I, I had multiple platograms and made one out of many. So it was, it was a challenge, but it was, it was a good thing. Um, for this artifact, I chose completing projects. Once again, I felt proud about this project. This project I completed this year, and I'm the son now. And I feel like I, I was able to not only prove that I can, I can do research and get to the bottom of things, but I can complete the project and feel proud of myself. Um, ways that I can use this outside of school, um, completing projects. Me and my friends, we, me and my other two friends, we, every time we listen to a song and we like it, we like the beat of it, we always, we're like, oh, let's make a choreography to it. So we always do that, and that to me is like a project. And, um, you know, we don't, we don't stop until we finish that song, like we don't move on to the next, to another song. We always just complete that one and focus on that one first, and then do the next one. This artifact completed my transformation to the sun. I feel like I was able to incorporate not one, but many leadership skills in this artifact. Um, this artifact proves that I was confident in my abilities to do research on my own, as well as doing something visual, because like I said, I'm more of a words person, and I like to write more than I like to draw. Uh, my interest and goal for the future, I, I play soccer, and I love dancing as well. Um, they're a big part of my life. For the future, I would like to be a psychologist with an emphasis on criminology. Or I would just love to do something where I can help others the way I feel I have been helped before in my life. Um, yeah. um, for my overall growth, I learned that because I'm now the sun, I can radiate my light to others. I want to serve as an inspiration. I am always encouraging others to do their work. I do this in a way that I would feel that I can get to them and sometimes it's with a bit of humor and other times it's a bit more serious. And recently I'm, I went, I, I, um, I went through an experience recently where um, my little cousin, he's two years old and he's in a coma. History, a lot of the times, um, things that repeat themselves over and over because people don't learn from their mistakes. People don't, people don't want to listen. And I've learned that you have to not only learn from your mistakes, but learn from your parents' mistakes as well. Um, your parents want the best for you. They don't, they don't want, to, they don't want bad things to happen to you. So it's just always better to, even though, you know, just learn from your mistakes. Questions?
so the questions are open first to the audience. Audience, this is your chance to support Yvonne by asking things that you want to know more about or that you feel like um, you want to make sure that she touches on, and then we'll open up to the panel. So Yvonne, you can call on people as hands go up. Okay, let's open it up to anybody who wants to ask questions now. Oh, Joe, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I just have a question. Um, the platypus is a very interesting creature because it's like the kind of the lost link between like mammals and reptiles and stuff like that. Well, is it really hard for scientists to get into Australia and find them? Or what, why do you think I there haven't been so many... Honestly, honestly, I just think they're they're a bit lazy. I don't know, actually. They, because when I was when I was um, looking for what a platypus was, a lot of people would say that they were like a mix between ducks and something else, but that's not true. And I feel like scientists have just they've just like been like, oh, if people think that this is true, then I guess I'm just gonna. Like, I honestly don't know. I, um, I just building off of the evolution project, I really appreciated you um, pointing out this idea of that the plot hasn't changed because it's been isolated, um, and that other things have changed more rapidly or more radically because they were exposed, whether it was a plant or an animal or whatever, exposed to other things. So I wonder um, if you could talk a little bit about then, how has the platypus exemplified like survival of the fittest? If it wasn't affected by other animals, like what, what's something that it has done that shows that it is surviving because it's fit according to Darwin's theory? Because it's fit to its environment? Yeah. <clears throat> well, it lives, because it lives by rivers and stuff, it has the food that it gets, it gets from underwater, like it gets worms and stuff. And so I feel like like it is it has survived in its environment for so long. Maybe I actually they platypuses are kind of endangered because in Australia there's a lot of pollution going on mm. and their rivers are being mm. contaminated. So I feel like like at this point they have to survive there like with as their environment changes, they have to change with it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Can I ask one more follow-up question to that? Is that okay with the panel? So, do you think that Darwin would say it's better to be isolated like the platypus has? Is that more, does that lead to the longevity of a species to be isolated? Or is it better to be exposed to other animals so that it sh you change more uh, radically? If things change around them, then obviously there's going to be some that are strong to survive in that environment and others that are not, so some of that population may die off. Mm -hmm. Do you think the same is true for people? Is it better for people to be isolated or is it better for people to be exposed to lots of different things or different people? I think it's better for people to be exposed. Why? Um, because things that you might be going through, other people may not. And so you just have to, like I said, you have to learn from your from people's mistakes, and being aware of what's what goes on around you is is crucial 
in order for you to know how to live your life. Because if you live ignorant, then to like to what others may be going through, then it just doesn't. There's there's no point. Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed hearing you talk about the allegory of the cave because um, I've never heard that before. <laughs> Um, and I just wondered if you could talk a little bit more about how that allegory connects to your Freedom Means project and what, what, what's the connection there? Um, oh, well, Freedom Means, I guess it, it relates because um, in the allegory of the cave, it's all about your perception of reality and mm -hmm. what's actually going on. And for Freedom Means, we had to do a lot of we had to do a lot of that, like doing what we think is right versus what or doing what others want us to think versus what's actually real. For example, like in um, like there was this small project that we had to do for the Freedom Means before starting that project, where we would look at the at what the media wanted us to think. For example, I chose beauty, um, what the media wanted us to think about beauty, and what was actually true. So I guess it it relates because to my Freedom Means project because you you just have to. Be aware of what your beliefs are, what you think is reality. Just mm -hmm. take all those perspectives and build your own. Go ahead, um, you talked about how you said you needed to work on um, what's finding flaws in your own work and in collaborating productively. I was wondering if you have any strategies that you might implement to yeah, help yourself. Yeah, um, like I said about finding flaws in my work, we have Google Docs, and I could um, I could share my work with with my teachers through email, and that way they can give me feedback. And I also have friends that help me a lot all the time, so <laughs> so they um so I could just, and I trust them, so I could give them my work and they could give me feedback. And because it'll be coming from them, I'll. I'll listen more, and I, I won't take it so offensively. Oh, and collaborating productively. Um, I feel like I just have to keep in mind that this is that collaborating productively. I'm gonna have to go through that like through all my life, and like at a job or whatever. And I need, I just need to learn how to work with people and how to understand that just because they don't want to get things done doesn't mean that I I can't help them out. I'm not just thinking of myself, but them as well. Um, so, I enjoyed your presentation, and I really liked the different artifacts you chose to present to us today. Um, I'm just curious, choosing one of one of the artifacts, um, how would you use the lessons learned or the skills learned from those artifacts in other areas of your life and or other classrooms like outside of I just choose one artifact. What, yeah, you can choose, talk about all three, or you can do one, whatever is easiest for you. Mm -hmm. I think I'll do the digital backdrop. Okay. Um, I feel like I can, I can learn a lot from that, like I've said like three times already. Like I'm more of a, of a words person and not so creative with visuals, but I feel that because now I've learned that skill, I can, because not everyone listens to just words. A lot of people like to see visuals and like to, that's that's how they learn and that's how they take things in. And now I have that skill and I can do that when I'm trying to convey a message to anybody else. I can do it through a visual or through words, whichever way I feel like the message will get across. Um, maybe change into the sun. Or maybe change into the sun. I don't know, I feel like, I feel like experiences like through my life, I don't know, I just, like before I was very shy and I just had to get comfortable, I had to get used to the people here and know that my opinions matter and um, yeah, I just, I feel like I, I can share my opinion and I feel like it's important and it counts. Um, you said with your plans for the future that um, you're interested in a lot of different things, but the, the main idea behind all of your interests is that you want to help people in some way. Um, and I'm just wondering if you could talk about how the contents of this portfolio, whether it's the academic content or the leadership skills, um, how will how will anything, or could you talk about how something 
for multiple things in this portfolio will help you help people someday. Yeah, I mean, the leadership skill is thinking critically. Because I want to be a psychologist, um, I feel like you, you have to listen to the person that, you know, that, I guess, because I'm like a therapist, you have to listen to that person and you have to really think about what they're going through and not not necessarily, you have to put your input into it, but not necessarily let it overpower what they are thinking. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that would help me. I feel like collaborating productively because I want to be in a field where I can help others. I'm constantly going to have to deal with other people. So mm -hmm. collaborating productively will help me to, to just help them as best as I can. Um, I really like the end of your presentation where you gave us a little bit of your personal life. And I really enjoyed hearing you say you should learn from your mistakes and listen to your family and grow from that. Is, do you have an example of how you learned from your mistakes and how have you grown from that? Um, can you give uh, a little bit of an example? I really appreciated um, how you talked about the Freedom Means Project and your ability to do a really fantastic job of sharing the allegory of the cave with people who haven't read it and make connections. But I'm wondering, like, what actually, what academic skill? So not a leadership skill, not necessarily thinking critically or whatever, but like, what academic skill did you use in that project? What did you learn in history class in order to be able to complete that project? I, um, before coming to Metro, I, I know about topic sentences and all of that, but I didn't know like exactly what a claim could be like, what it was, and I feel like I learned that. Like I know that in order to have a claim, you have to you have to have a clear idea of what it is that you believe and have clear evidence to back that idea up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, sorry. Just a continued question then. Can you give an example of how you've applied that understanding of a claim to another class that is not English or history? Um, to math. Like, um, I remember in the beginning of the year, there's, we had um, problems that we had to solve. And then you have to have, I guess, reasoning behind those. Like, however you solve the problem, you have to have reasoning behind that. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I did this because... This is a 45, 90, 45, 90 degree angle. So you have to really explain like why why it is that you got that 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 answer, mm -hmm. and also explain the steps that you went through to get that. And that's your evidence. Thank you. I'm going to follow up to that. And what academic skills did you learn in the lower house that you know you'll take with you to the lower, to the upper house? Um, one of them is note taking. Um, I used to just, you know, just write everything off the teacher I used to write up on the board, not really understanding what I was, what I was supposed to be understanding. And now I feel like I take bullet points, and if there's a word that the teacher has up, up on the board that I do not understand, I'll ask her or him for a clarification, and just like, I'll ask for clarification and write it down in my own words.
Sorry. Um, can you get, you brought up that, um, I feel like you've been really reflective and honest, Yvonne, about collaborating productively and how that is both a challenge, but also how, you, how you've learned to do that in SLC. Can you give a specific example, tell us a story about something that you, that the SLC collaborated on that you feel like you contributed to, um, importantly so? Well, there was, there's this, I think we had to do a poster to, um, to let, to let the students know, the school know that we were, um, we want, we had applications to enter SLC, and we, um, we had to do basically a lot of propaganda, like, oh, join SLC, like, look at and stuff, and so I feel like, um, like, I was asking people, like, you know, hey, you want to join SLC? Like, I was asking her, is you can join SLC? She's like, yeah, I'm thinking about it. And she got an application, and I feel like, I feel like I collaborated productively because I was, I was able to at least get one person to, to think about applying to SLC. Great. Any other questions from the audience or from the panel? Okay, let's give a big round of applause for it.